Hi, so today I'm in the BMW iX3, which is the full electric version of the BMW X3. And I've been kindly enough to be given a test drive from BMW Chandler's in Halsham, so big shout out to them. And for me, there's a couple of questions that I wanna answer um, by having this car. So I am a car lover, I am a bit of a petrol head, and I've got a Mercedes E-Class at the moment, and the wife's got a, um, a BMW 440i. And I've last six months, I've been getting a little bit bored with the Mercedes uh, E-Class, and I'm looking at kind of changing my vehicle. And the reason I wanted to do this review on this car is because I've looked at four or five reviews on this car, and a lot of them are abroad. Um, so again, they're great reviews, but they're not done in the UK, on the UK model. And a lot of them, have spent 15 minutes talking about the outside and how big the boot is and how many miles you can get on a charge which are all really important things to have um, but none of them have kind of shown or really showed me what I wanted to see in respects to if it really is a driver's car and more importantly is it good enough to replace my Mercedes because I do love my Mercedes and um, I, I love my cars so over the last 10 years I've owned estates so Again, I love my estates. I've had a uh, Mercedes C-Class, which I loved, had that for a couple of years. Then I swapped it for a, an Audi S-Line 190 model. Again, not the most powerful thing in the world, but again, I loved it as a car. But then what I actually realized is how much I missed my Merc. So I went back to another Merc. Then I swapped that, and then I stupidly brought an A45 AMG shooting brake. Had it six weeks and then I gave it back because I hated the thing and I've now got my E-Class 200 estate. So again, not the most powerful thing in the world, but as a car, I love driving it and it's gonna take some beating from, for me to want to change from my Merc into a BMW. Now, I do love BMWs. Like I say, my wife's got a 440i, which is a three litre twin turbo petrol, around about 400 horsepower. It is an absolute beast. Uh, and we love it, so that's kind of the weekend toy thing. Um, my my cars are always sign written quite heavily, so obviously you have to drive quite sensibly, as you all should, by the way. Um, but with sign writing all over it, obviously you tend to drive a little bit slow and a bit more sensible. So I'm not looking to buy, you know, a 600 horsepower machine. And my whole life I've been a car man, petrol, 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 and I've had a couple of diesels, quite talky diesels. And the reason I'm in this today is because, long story short, I had a meeting with my accountant, and when I went over to BMW, I drove the X3, I drove the X5, the three litre model, the four litre model, and I wanted to be in something bigger. So, although I love my estates, I wanted to go up in size just a little bit, but still kind of keep a big five seater, have something that I can put the seats down and chuck a load of rubbish in, because um, again, the, I run a kitbox in school, so quite a lot of the time I've got five people in a loaded kit, or I'm putting punch bags and kick shields in the boot. So I need quite a big car that I can chuck stuff in. And a lot of the root reviews on these, or any car they'll go, it's got, I don't know, 480 litres of boot space. But let's be honest, you just want to know if you can fit your suitcases in it, or the kids and the wife in it, or the kit, or whatever. You don't, I don't know many people that actually pay attention to, oh, that's got 480 litres, and that one's got 495 litres. Um, can you fit your golf clubs in it? That's kind of what you want to know. So we're going to look at that later. We're going to have a look around the car later. But instead of doing a 15 minute review around the outside, you want to know how it drives and what it goes like. So I've just left Halsham. I'm sitting in traffic. So I first of all wanted to say why I'm doing this review uh, and the choice of my cars. So a lot of things people don't say, they review the car, but not why they want the car. So. One of the reasons I like the idea of this, the world is starting to change electric, and obviously it's good for the environment, um, but it also saves me, in comparison, this electric vehicle over, say, the three litre diesel X5, um, it's gonna save me about 450 pound a month, roughly, by having this car. So this car is gonna be cheaper by 450 pound a month, so my accountant tells me. Um, and that's not including the fuel cost either. So obviously you could spend a tenner a month or you could spend a hundred pound a week on fuel, depending on how many miles you do. So it's gonna be interesting to see, when I jumped in this, the range was 180 miles. BMW claim it's, I don't know, 280. 
but like anything if you're jumping in a car that's been thrashed up and down the motorway then obviously you're going to be getting you know 18 to the gallon but if you've been sitting on the motorway at 60 mile an hour then you're going to get 45 to the gallon so at the moment this is probably running in that kind of 20 miles to the gallon kind of era because this has been out on test drives um for the last couple of weeks so people are just thrashing it up and down the road and then in theory um bmw have been so kind to lend it to me for 24 hours and one of the reasons i asked for that is because when i brought the amg i drove it up and down the road thrashed it i loved it it made a wicked noise it sounded great but um after owning it a couple of weeks and there's a few other problems i had it had to go back to the garage a few times um but it was just noisy and lumpy getting in and out the doors hard work and like I say, I'm a kit boxer, so it's not like I'm 20 stone, 70 years old and struggle to get in and out of cars. So, Ian, even I struggled to get in and out. Uh, the seat was too hard and so on and so on. So, the reason for today and the reason for this review for me, and hopefully you guys watching, is, is it better than the Mercedes? Is it worth the money? This is the, um, this is not the Pro Edition. I've ordered the Pro Edition um but it's just a special edition or whatever it's called but i want the head-up display and harm and calm and etc um but is it worth the money is it worth or is it better than my merc and more importantly is it worth swapping from a petrol or a diesel to an electric car now not many people have answered this in all the reviews i've, I've watched they've talked about the electric cars and the electric car they've talked about it as an x3 and does it compare to the other x3 um it feels exactly the same as the other X3 that I've driven, just it's electric rather than diesel. Um, the X3 that I drove was a 2 litre D, um, so it was in my head slightly underpowered. And again, some people go, oh, it's an amazing car. For me, it's slightly underpowered. The X5 I had was the um, 3 litre diesel, so it had a bit more power. Um, but the reason I'm changing from an estate to an X3 is because I want tank bigger, I want a bit more road presence. Um, but I don't want to be too big. So I, I've driven over the last six months, I've taken out quite a lot of cars. I really wanted to like the GOE. I really wanted to like it. And I drove it and it's just too big and boaty. It's too heavy. Um, it doesn't feel like a car. So I took it out and the sales guy was like, oh my God, what do you think? And I was like, it's not too bad. It's quite quick. It's quite talky. Um, you're going quicker than you feel because it eats the road up. To look at, it's beautiful, but it just feels like a boat going around corners, going around roundabouts, and not even going too quickly, it just feels like a barge. So I've just said to them, I don't like it. Uh, and then some people have said about the Range Rover Sport, so I drove one of them about two weeks ago, and again, people are saying you can drive it like you can drive your car. You can drive it like you drive your car, but when I went out in it, the wife was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, it feels a bit heavy, so I've got to drive a little bit slower and a bit, a bit softer. So when we got to the next roundabout, which was on the A21, I went round the roundabout like I was in my Merc. <laughs> And guess what? Turns out, sorry Range Rover lovers, but the Range Rover does not drive like a car. Um, we've gone round and it was a little bit sideways and a little bit four wheels. And then she's gone, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, you said drive it normally. So I drove it normally and it turns out the Range Rover doesn't go around a bend like your Mac. So I went to BMW, tried the X5 again, loved it, lovely car, uh, a little bit heavy. So. Uh, Adam said, have you tried the X3? I was like, no, can I try one? Yes, you can. And then we started talking about this model that's come out this year, 2021, all electric new X3. So here we are. What do I think? Well, I'm doing 43 miles an hour and I'm in traffic. So at the moment, so I don't think much, it feels smooth, it's comfortable, it's quiet. I can have a nice chat with you guys. I am gonna try, which I've never tried before by the way, is the active cruise control. Um, does it work? Uh, let's try that button there. Press the button for active cruise. Still not working. Bear in mind I've never used it before. Uh, press button for that. Okay, so I've now got the active cruise control on, which I've worked out in about 10 seconds, so it's pretty cool. Um, and then I can select the distance between the car and front. So instead of doing cruise, normal cruise, and again, a lot of you will probably do this and go, oh yeah, that works all the time. I've never had active cruise in my car, so this is kind of cool. And then if I play with a mode, assisted driving. So now, <laughs> police car coming by, sorry bud. Um, so I've now got the active cruise control on, but the lane assist as well. So again, if you've never had lane assist, 
what it's doing is it's keeping me in the lane. So I'm just going around a, it's not a sharp corner, but a bit of a right hand bend and it is steering. Oh, I've got, so you've got to keep your fingers on the steering wheel or it beeps at you and tells you off. Um, but it is keeping me. So if I pick up a little bit more speed, let's go to 45, I'm in the 60s, 45 school. Um, it picks up on the car in front. You can change the distance apparently as well. So if I change, does that work? That right there. So you can change the range to the car in front. And what it's doing is it, it's keeping them in the lane, but it's also keeping me a safe distance from the car in front. And you can also change that range if you want. Um, and if I let go of the steering wheel, I wouldn't recommend it. My hands are quite close, ready just in case I need to but it's keeping me at the speed and it's also now telling me I need to put my hands back on the steering wheel. So there's obviously a sensor somewhere that tells you your hands are on the steering wheel. And again, you see the idiots that you're sitting in the passenger seat, um, not holding onto the steering wheel because they're in the wrong seat. Oh, and there's a tractor just about to pull out. So again, I don't know how the car would react to that. I've now gone back to driving it. Um, but that was a bit of a blind left hand bend. How good is the system at picking up stuff? Again, obviously it can break to a certain point, but let's be honest, we have no idea if you come around the corner at 50, which you're allowed to do, it's a 60, and then um, a tractor just pulls out, how well is it gonna react? Um, will it react better than you? I have no idea. If he'd pulled out a little bit more, I would have had to go around his bonnet a little bit, but thankfully he just stayed there. So, at the moment, it's quiet, it's smooth, um, the steering feel, feels quite nice. The that feels a bit plastic, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so what we are gonna be doing as well is, I've gotta to go to work in a bit, so I'm gonna go home, grab some lunch, go out for a bit of a drive. I'm just sitting in traffic, so it is a little bit boring for you guys. Um, and then later on, we're gonna to go to the gym. Not that that means anything to you lot. And then afterwards, uh, we're gonna go for a little bit of a play, and we're gonna see how this compares to the Wyeth 440. Obviously safely and legally, but again, that's what I want to know. Is it, let's let this car go. Is it going to be, is it going to keep up with our car or not? Is it going to perform as well? For a small SUV, is it going to handle the bends? Again, just, again, instant torque, which is pretty good. Throw it around a little bit, up to 30. Uh, it feels all right. It does feel all right. So stick with us. I'm not going to continue filming because we're sitting in traffic. I'm going to do a review of the dash and the interior later. I'm obviously going to give you a view of the outside as well. Um, but more importantly, we want to see how it drives, how it handles. I want to get used to it first. And then um, later on, after work, we're going to go for a bit of a play. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I got bored talking to myself. And uh, I'm just driven from Eastbourne back to Hastings. And one thing, another thing people haven't spoke about is the, or certainly that I've seen them speak about much, is the, uh, I believe it's called Regen. So there's a mode... You push the, the, the gear lever to the side and you go into a regen mode. So when you come off the throttle, um, it starts breaking the car and giving you regen to the battery. So in theory, charging it back up. Um, when I first started doing it, about 10 minutes ago, I hated it. I was like, oh my God, that feels horrible. And so to start with, you're like, so you come off the pedal and it, <laughs> it just pulls you forward straight away, which is really bizarre. Um, and there's a tiny little sweet spot on the, on the throttle where you, you come right off it and you just touch it and it allows the car to coast. So although you come off the throttle, you just put a little bit of pressure on and it allows it to roll. But the second you lift your foot off, <laughs> it pulls you forward. Um, which is really, see it's doing it again. Um, and now I haven't braked, but it's just stopped the car. So to start with, it was really, really, uh, doing it again, see it's really alien. I'm st still getting used to it. It's like, uh, uh. I look like a learner that doesn't know how to use brakes. Um, so really bizarre, but as I was driving along a bit of a road, you know, doing sort of 30, 40 in traffic, stopping at a junction, and that sounds really primitive, but you don't even have to brake. You just come off the throttle when it stops. Um, and, and I know it might sound really silly, but I always wind up the wife, because she's got a manual handbrake in her BM. Like, you know, you have to pull a lever up to stop the car from rolling. Uh, and you have to press a button to make the windows fold in and out. And I always wonder, I'm like, your car's so primitive. Now, I always thought you don't need an electric handbrake, you don't need electric folding mirrors, BMW, that's gonna be really tight, bus man. Um, but once you've got it, you hate, 
you, you think, well, why do I need a handbrake? Because the car does it for me. And why do I have to press a button to fold the mirrors in? How, how basic function is that? Um, and then once you've got it, you're like, well, I don't, I don't want to have to put a handbrake up. I just want it to work. I just want the mirrors to fold in when I get out of the car rather than just press a button to do it. It'd be interesting to see if this does this. And let's be honest, it might be an optional extra on the wife's BMW, but the, the, again, the Merc just does it. <laughs> again, it's breaking for me. But once you get the hang of it, uh, it's actually quite cool. Coming up to roundabout, come off the pedal, no braking whatsoever, it keeps braking, keeps braking, and then back on the pedal, and then you go again. So I reckon a couple of days of getting used to that, and I, I think braking's gonna be really primitive. What do you mean you have to brake your car to slow it down? That, I think that's gonna be really interesting to see how I feel tomorrow. Again, coming up to a 20 zone, come off the pedal, slows you down, go to the speed ramps, and then come off the pedal again, slows you down for the junction, check your mirrors, uh, and then away you go again. Um, so that, I just, I wanted to add that really, because no one's really talked about that on the reviews. And they've never gone into detail because I've always wanted to know what it feels like. So I'm literally just pulling up home now. One of the other reasons I needed the car overnight is because I need to park it on my driveway. Now my driveway is pretty damn tight, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And the, the Merc just gets on there just. Um, this is, I don't know, 20 mil shorter, but 20 mil wider. So it's going to be really interesting to see and again, you'll get, you see, I have to go forward and round, and the daughter's car's in the way. Again, it's braking for me, which is really weird. And let's just try and reverse straight on, shall we? Let's not see if it fits or doesn't fit. Right, that's changed my folding mirror. I don't want that to happen. I need to see the car, not the ground. So the mirror obviously automatically changes for you. So you can see the curb, but I need to be able to see. <laughs> so you're probably gonna hear how tight it is to get on this driveway. And we're gonna do it in one, no. I probably could, but I'll take a little snatch. Um, okay, let's squeeze. And again, I still use mirrors. We've got cameras and we've got sensors. You can hear it beeping away. Come on, get up, get up. Get up. But, again, one of the problems I've got with my motor, are we hitting anything? Are we, are we on? You can hear how tight it is. Look, go back. Cool. Right, so we are in. First time parking on there, we managed to get in without hitting walls or scratching the cars, which is good. Um, what do I press? That park? Are we parked? We're parked, cool, turn that off. So there you go. It is quite easy to park. Um, it is quite tight. I'm gonna take the camera out and show you how tight it is. But one of the problems I've got with the Merc is I've put it on the driveway, and if I go too far backwards, I can't open the door because we've got a, um, a link detached. So the driveway's in between two houses, as you can probably see, and there's uh, not enough room to open the door. So I kind of have to overhang the footpath just a little bit to allow me to, to do that. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna go and have a little look to see how tight it is and what it looks like. So let me just take you off there. Excuse the close up of my face. Apologies for that, people. I'll probably cut it. Okay, so excuse the close-up of the face, but first of all, can I open the door? I can, which is good, which means I can get out of the car, otherwise it hits that wall, and then, then there's no room. So we are on the driveway, and it did fit, and I can walk out, which is great. Um, and again, you can see it does fit. So it's, I think, 20 mil wider, but 20 mil shorter, give you an idea of kind of how tight it is. But I am, it actually, it is a slightly better shape than my Merc. Oh, so I'm overhanging a little bit less and I can still get on and off the driveway. So that's a good test. Excuse the neighbor's dog barking at me. <laughs> so there you go, it does fit. It is tight, but it does go on. Win. So just jumped back in after having some lunch and when I popped home, uh, I just took the wife around the block in it very quickly, um, only for like two or three miles. But she was dead against uh, electric. She was dead against getting like a small SUV as opposed to you know, a sports car um, and I took it around a block we and uh, stupid taxi driver and um, she was like oh, I would really like that I really like that so I mean not that it would be a yes or a no she said yes or no to getting it but the fact that she likes it is obviously a bonus um, and you can kind of throw it around a little bit again not going like mental but you can throw this about and it does respond uh, quite nicely. Uh, it certainly responds a lot better than I thought it was going to. And I don't just mean power, I mean like going around the roundabout. It 
just it does quite it does what you want it to do and it does it quite quickly so um so far so good so here we go as promised um i've had to put the light on because it's starting to get dark so hopefully it's not blinding the camera too much um i have my wife in front in her bmw 440i it is three years old so 2018 model um it's 400 horsepower give or take um it's a bit of a beast i mean it's not a monster it's not a lamborghini but um you know when you go out for a bit of a play there's not a lot that um you know, will keep up with it um, in every day so i have been now driving i've been to the gym and back a couple of times i've been home and back so when i picked it up it had 180 miles on in the tank i think or range should i say and i've driven probably 30 miles and i've got 190 in range so that would have picked it up to like 230 roughly so obviously the test drives it's been out on has literally been round town and up and down the dual carriageway on the a22 when you put it into sport mode you definitely notice the steering firm up uh, the responsiveness the responsiveness of the pedal as well uh, as for power hard to say really because i've not really had much of a play so far so we're just about to go into uh, an a road quite a safe pretty quick road again we're only going to be doing the speed limits anyway but there's quite a few very slow bends so we're going to be looking at what this can do in compared to the, the wife's car in front um, and see if it will keep up or if she leaves me for dead so in the Merc up to about 40 I can kind of she will she'll get away from me but I can kind of stay with her uh, but then after sort of 40 mile an hour the, the BM just tramples all over the muck so it's going to be interesting to see um, again there's a lot of sort of 20 30 mile an hour bends um, I have said we're not going to go mad but it will be nice to kind of see if she leaves me for dead if I can keep up but she's pulling away from me or if uh, if um, I'm keeping up with her so we'll see in a minute because we're just about to go left so I'm going to keep it in sport yeah she's turning left hopefully the cars in front are turning right which they are which is good all right let's see how we get on shall we Give me some grip, give me some grip. 
Thank you very much. So, traction troubles in quite heavily, didn't allow me to go. But again, Chad had a bit of wheel slip as well. Again, I'm trying not to cut the corners. I'm trying to keep it within the parameters of the road. And obviously I'm trying not to cheat. Because again, when you're following someone, it's quite easy and then cut the corner and kind of just cut off a couple of milliseconds. Again, at the corner, I get instant torque where Sade's not got that. Again, I'm catching her up that time. Back to the speed limit, so slab, like, you know, just stick it at the speed limit. But what is quite interesting is she's not leaving me at all, and round the bends, um, it is kind of, it is, it is fun, and it is keeping up with her. She's not, she's not pulling away from me. Cyclists, don't go down. Um, you know, I am staying with her, and she's not leaving me. Whereas in the Merc, I, I really have to kind of work the car really hard to keep up with her. Um, and even then, once we get above 40, the BM just goes. Once in, because it's a three litre twin turbo. If you guys don't know, the uh, the 440 means it's the three litre twin turbo, which is the more, the more powerful one. Um, okay, we're gonna go, yeah, go right, yeah, go, yeah, good. So we're gonna go right, not left. So there's a few more bends going back that way. And if we go that way, it's a much faster road. And, um, you know, I don't wanna be, it's not my car, I don't wanna risk potentially Having a minor accident, I'm sure BMW won't be happy with that as well. So again, I'm literally just testing it out to the the limits of what we can do on the, the normal road without taking the mic. So, yep, she's left me space to come out with her, which is good. All right, we're good to go. Again, I can hear her giving it the stick. Again, I'm staying with her. I'm staying with her. She's not left me. She's still right there. Again, she's a good driver. But again, I'm staying with her completely. Mm, a little bit boaty there, not too much. And again, back into traffic. So, that's what I was really interested in for me in this car is, because again, if, if, if we go out for a day out, if we're going to go for a drive, if we're going to go to, say, Blue Water, Lakeside, Brighton for the day, we'll take her car because it's more enjoyable. So it's more of a driver's car. I love my Merc. It's so smooth and it's so comfortable, but it doesn't excite me. I'm not like, oh, yeah, I love driving. I, I love driving it, but it doesn't excite me as a driver. Um, it's very smooth. It's very executive. It's very comfortable. The BM's a bit more bouncy. It's a bit harder when obviously potholes and manhole covers and stuff. You feel it a little bit more. Whereas the Merc is just glide smooth, but it doesn't excite you like the BM does. So, you know, if we're going out for an evening, we'll take her out because it's, it's a bit more fun to drive. Um, but if we're doing, you know, if we're traveling three, 400 miles, then we'll take mine instead. Um, mine, because I mainly drive two three miles to the gym to work every day that's pretty much my journey one of the reasons i'm looking at this car is i mean i don't thrash it to work i don't drive slowly but i don't go mad um and i'm only getting like 21 to the gallon at the mark because it's not warming up it's not getting to temperature when i drove to eastbourne this morning to pick this up i'm getting 28 to the gallon which is still not great i mean it's not bad but it's not brilliant um, we get 28 to the gallon out of that in front, and that's much more fun than the Merc. Um, uh, and driving it at kind of about the same a level of aggression, I guess. Um, but again, we're just sitting here at 31, 32 mile an hour. We're in traffic, cars in front of us. Um, but, like, on days, I might only get 16 out of the Mercedes going to the gym if it's cold and I drive a little bit quicker than normal. If I literally roll to the gym which is boring. Um, you know, I might get 22, 23 out of it, and that's about it, which is, it's, it's only a two litre. It's it's disgusting, right? You can wait there, because I'm following the wife, thank you very much. Um, it, it's terrible, like horrendously bad. Uh, Mercedes costs 70 quid to fill up, and I get, on average, 250 miles to a tank. It tells me 300, but it lies. Uh, if I go on a run, I might get three to 350 out of a tank. 
roughly, but again, I only go on a run probably once every two months, so I'm not actually getting a lot out of it. And obviously, I couldn't tell you on this, but 200 miles to in theory a charge. Um, it told me 180 when I got in it. We're probably going to get 210 out of it, and um, again, they, they, they do say that you can get 280 out of it. You know, weather conditions right, wind behind you with the nice wheels that are aerodynamic. But in reality, you're probably only going to get 200 out of it. But I'd have to have this for a week to kind of tell you any different. Let's go back to comfort. Let's go to eco, actually, see what happens in eco mode. Yeah, the pedal's got a lot softer. I have to press it a lot harder to make it do anything. So let's go back to comfort. So, um, so yeah, as I was saying, you, you're probably going to get 200 miles out of, out of a charge. But then I believe a full charge is only seven quid. So if I'm only getting 250 miles out of my Merc and it cost me 70 quid, actually cost me 79 quid the other day to fill up. I mean, it was quite empty. So if you said 75 pound to fill it up and I'm only getting 250 miles out of it, um, and if I get 200 miles out of this and it only costs seven quid to fill up. Now, if you go to Tesco's, apparently you can charge it for free while you're there. So you can fill it for free. You can charge it for free, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we're back in traffic. We're driving back home now. So um, that's kind of the end of the fun. Again, I don't. It's not my car. I don't want to take the mic. I don't. Want, I don't want to risk, you know, drifting it around corners. I mean, they did say you can't drift it, but it is rear wheel drive. So there will be people saying, well, it's an SUV. It's a. It's a four by four. It's a shame it's not four by four. Let's be honest, how many of you will drive this car and need four-wheel drive? How many of you will go off-roading in this car? Probably zero. Uh, so the fact that it's just rear-wheel drive won't make any difference to 90% of you. Um, and to be honest, I mean, they said you can't drift it. And I'm not going to try it in this because it's not mine and I don't want to pay the access if I did ding it. But traction control off if you're a good driver, I bet you, I bet you could have a bit of fun in this. I'm not going to do it, but I bet you could have some fun. So, there you go. That's my verdict so far. Do I like it? Yes. Am I having fun in it? Yes. Am I having more fun than I thought I was going to in an electric car? Yes, 100%. Um, tomorrow in the daylight, I'll give you a quick view around the outside and the inside, and I'll give you my thoughts and feelings on it. Um, again, I won't do a massive review because so many people have done so many reviews on you know the the aerodynamic wheels and the body kit and bits and pieces so i'll give you my review if you want to listen to it and a few other bits and pieces because obviously i'm going to have it still for another uh, morning tomorrow so i might take it out for a bit of a, a bit of a play tomorrow and see if i really fall in love with it so i'm going to say bye for now i'm on my way home it is fun i did enjoy it um and she couldn't get away from me so 400 horsepower full electric and although this doesn't pop and bang and make all them sexy sounds, um, if I was in that and this was keeping up, I'd be a bit upset that an electric car's keeping up with me. So there you go. Uh, have a good evening. I'll be back tomorrow with some more. Okay, so we've just got to another bit of a lane. Uh, I just wanted to, I've turned the light off. I have no idea if it's better or worse. Um, I've just overtook her quickly, caught her sleeping probably pitch black and you probably can't see me anymore but again we're just stuck behind a couple of slow cars really so I'm just gonna practice a little bit of overtaking again not taking the mech if it's safe to do so of course at the moment it is so let's give it a squeeze see how we get on so yeah overtaking mid torque perfect again she didn't have time to come with me but the mid-range tour going up is pretty damn good. Again, this is my first ever electric car. Um, I've driven one or two around the block, but again, the engine braking when you're actually going at pace is really cool, really helpful. Actually, um, it really does improve the drive. So slowing down from 60 then to coming towards roundabout, I took my foot off the throttle, and is she going to get past? No, she's not. Um, took my foot off the throttle and it's almost like the car was like oh he needs to brake so I didn't even need to brake which is really intuitive actually it's kind of nice and again coming off the throttle again because it's sensing what's coming up which 
which I've never had before, which is really weird. Um, it's kind of good. Had a roundabout push. Yeah, and it does grip and go. It is it's pretty awesome. So there you go. Just wanted to add that. It's probably pitch black. You probably can't see me. Uh, but there you go. Cool. Good morning. So I'm back for no, day two in the car, I guess. And there, there's bits in this car that I'm falling in love with. And there, there's bits that are a bit of a niggle, but they're, they are only a niggle. Um, but first of all, I want to say uh, we went out for quite a nice drive last night, late at night. Again, just for a bit of a bit of a drive out to roads that like we'd normally go to if we was going out for the day or if we was going to go out for breakfast in the morning, that kind of thing. And this car, the more I drive it, the more I'm starting to love it. And the reason I wanted to, to say this very quickly was I was just uh, at the gym working and I've got a plumber working at my house. And um, long story short, he decided to flood my kitchen. One of the isolation valves wouldn't turn off. So he's like, can you shoot to plumb something and give me some bits really quickly? So obviously I am... Um, I very sharply um, got to the plum center and then very sharply got to my house. And again, this, you know, when you're, you're, when you're flooding your kitchen, you tend to drive, um, you know, as you do. And this was brilliant. Um, it, it handles extremely well. For, um, it's an SUV, but it is a small SUV, but it's still for what I would call is a truck rather than you know an estate or you know a smaller car um it does handle and point and press really well for an suv so we've got um my one of my coaches has got a oh yeah put it in front of me well done um has got a nissan Qashqai, which is nice but it doesn't handle anywhere near like this and they're about the same size, you know, the, the cash guy over this, it, you know, give or take a, a tiny little bit, but you know, they're modeled on the same vehicle. So it has, it really has impressed me the last sort of 12 hours, um, as I get used to it, a bit more comfortable with it. It really has, um, it, you know, it's a big tick, let's put it that way. So I'm, I'm just going back to work now, and I'm going to give you a quick tour around the inside and the outside of the car, uh, just to show you very quickly. It won't be a 20 minute this and that, it will be a quick, because let's be honest, if you really want to look at all of that, you'd rather go on the website and look at the 360 view, or you'll look at the other reviews where other reviewers have reviewed it for like 25 minutes, showing you the ins and outs of every little nut and bolt. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and you might feel the same. You might not care. It doesn't really matter. So, we'll see you in a sec. So let's have a quick look around the dashboard, and it is really nice in here. There's nothing not to like whatsoever. Um, again, people will say about the noise you know, when you start up, you get a funky noise. Um, apparently some some really famous um, guy that creates music done that. Is it needed? Not really, but you know, it's okay. Standard steering wheel, you've got all your controls as usual. The, the, um, the controls itself are quite pretty. They're quite nice. Again, depending on what you're used to looking at. Again, there's nothing wrong with what's in front of us. It's really nice. The lever's pretty good. There's lots of space. There's a nice big sunroof. Um, apparently there's a camera on here that films, and if you're in an accident or if someone cuts you up, you can press a button somewhere and it tells you, the um, it records the first 15 and the last 15 seconds. So if someone was to hit and run away, apparently it will automatically film it for you, which is pretty good. Um, I've not tried it because obviously I've not crashed. Um, Again, centre console's quite nice. You've got your mobile charging point in there. Um, you've got a key holder. You've got a little funky thing in there. It's just nice. It's just nice. Um, Mercedes versus BMW. At this point, I would have to say the Mercedes is a little bit prettier. So that I always kind of... I'll tell you what it feels like. The difference between an iPhone and a Samsung. So... For me, I think the Samsung's probably a slightly prettier phone. It looks nicer, and it, it's probably slightly higher resolution, all that kind of stuff. But for me, the iPhone works a little bit better. And I kind of feel like that's the same in here. I feel like it just works a little bit better. The iDrive system in the BMW is fantastic. The one in the Merc is very good, but the one in the BMW is just a little bit better. But... The dashboard in the Merc, I think, for me personally, is slightly prettier. It's, again, it's just 
a little bit nicer than the BMW. There's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. And if you just sat in here, you would absolutely love it. But um, if you sat in a Merc, I think you would be slightly more impressed with the Merc, ever so slightly. So that's the back. There's plenty of room for, for you to sit in. Um, you can get four adults comfortably. You might get five, maybe. How big's your boot? You're gonna be able to get your golf clubs in there. You're gonna get your suitcases in there. How many liters is it? I ain't got a clue. I think it was 480. But I can sit in it. Okay, I can't sit up in it, but I can sit in it. So it's a pretty big boot. There's plenty of space. You'll get and so you'll get your golf clubs in there, you'll get your luggage in there. Um again, I don't know if the, the pro edition has it, but I know it sounds really silly. But on on the Merc, if you do that, it opens and shuts the tailgate. And again, I know that sounds really primitive. And I was like, why would I ever want to use that in my life ever? But when you're walking up to your car with Tesco shopping, um, you've got your kit bag, you've got your golf clubs, you just put your foot under it and it opens. It's just rather than just putting your stuff down. Someone chilling on me. So that's the boot, it's nice and big. And obviously this is round, give you an outside of the car. So I really like white cars. Uh, I think white cars are a love-hate. Um, I really like white cars. And the thing I wasn't sure about is this black trim. And in the, on the internet, it looks good. And you think, oh, actually, it doesn't look too bad. But when you get up close to it, for me personally, it just looks a little bit cheap. Now, I'm gonna tell you about something in a minute. The wheels, again, you can love them or hate them. I think wheels completely make a car. I think these wheels don't make this car. So if I was to buy this car, the first thing I'd do is change the wheels. Now, BMW say that these are super efficient wheels that give you an extra six miles per charge. I personally would rather have nicer wheels and lose the six miles, but that's me. Um, what I will say is this handles bumps fantastically, even better than my E-Class. Uh, the E-Class is really smooth and handles bumps perfectly. Um, but this just goes over anything, which is great. By the way, this video is sponsored by Hastings Kickboxing. So that's my business. That's what I run. Just before I get a little plug, let's go around the other side. And there's the front. Again, I'm not a lover of the front grille, it has to be said. So this is the Premier model. So they are, there is a Pro model, which is the one that I've ordered, which comes with a few more extras. So that is the Premier Edition. Uh, the Pro Edition comes with Harman Kardon sound, and it comes with a few little extras. But what I'm really interested in is, I, I ordered mine back in June. It was meant to be here now in August, and I haven't even been given a build slot yet. So it's probably looking at November, December because of um, COVID and you know the, the computer chips aren't being made, therefore cars are not being made as quickly. So I've been offered the opportunity to wait and get the M Sport model. So it comes with a different interior, I believe different seats, but more importantly in this video, now I'm going to put the difference for the front, so I'll click it in now. So that's the difference on the front of the car for the M Sport, and then again I'm just giving you like loads of views. You can pause it, stop, start it as much as you want. This video, if you want to have a look around it, and then the rear. So there's going to be a new rear end to it as well, which is going to be the M Sport. And for me, that's probably one of the only things that this car is lacking for me is it doesn't have that M Sport feel. I love it, it drives well, it looks okay, but then a standard Mercedes looks okay until you buy the AMG line with the AMG wheels and the front splitters and all the other little tweaks that just make it look a little bit better. Now, personally for me, I mean, that looks okay, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, but I do believe the M Sport is going to look much 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 better and again i've only seen it on a photo on the internet so far again just jump hanging it's really easy to get in because obviously it's a little bit higher um and one other thing i really like is the driving position i don't know how well you can see this on the camera but you've got a really kind of dominant aggressive bonnet and it's got them two lovely bulges and when you're driving down the road it just feels like you are taking the road like it really feels like you've got a powerful stance you really feel like you are owning your side of the road whereas obviously the smaller your car gets the the little it feels um so that feels really good again for me the the standard system in this the standard sound system in this is good the 
it's better than the standard Mercedes sound system. So, so the sound system in here for a standard sound system is really good. It's better than the standard one in my Merc. So the Mercedes, uh, they do uh, a premium and then a premium plus model. The premium one is a little bit upgraded and then the plus is the, um, the, the obviously the all signal dancing 28 speakers surround sound. And it will be the same in this. So the upgraded version, the pro model of this comes with a um, Harman Kardon sound system. So this is the standard one. And the standard one in this is better than the standard one in the Mercedes uh, as standard. And then obviously the, the upgraded system is gonna be even better. It's pretty good. It's again, how, how good it's gonna sound on there. We don't know. Let's put some radio on. So it depends on what music you're into, but it does sound all right in there. Quite it's a little tinny, but this is the standard sound system. But the bass in here is so much better than the bass in the Mercedes for the standalone system. Depends on what music you're into as well. So if you're into dance. Um, you might be into jazz. Depends on your musical tastes. That sound good. What else can we listen to? A bit of seventies. So, I think for most people, this is more than good enough. Um, when I was younger, I used to um, we used to make sound, I used to work for a disco shop, so we used to make sound systems. So I am a bit anal when it comes to music and clarity and bass. So I really do like sound. So I think for most people, this will be more than good enough, and this one does outweigh the Mercedes standard. Um, but I'm looking forward to listening to the upgraded version um, in this car uh, when it comes out. There you go. So here's my final review on the car, um, or my summary. Before I finish, I just want to say this is the first ever review that I've ever done on a vehicle like this. Uh, lots of people always ask me to do them, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do one. So if you've enjoyed it, if you found it insightful, if you found it better than others, I'd be really interested to know if it has helped you out, uh, because obviously I might do a few more if you have. Uh, if you thought it was rubbish, then tell me that as well. I've tried to review it differently to others because I'm trying to give you bits that I want to see and want to hear rather than the, the standard that you normally see in reviews. So the, the couple of questions are really, is it worth the money for this car? Yes, simple. Is it good enough to replace my Merc? Yes, it is. Does it drive better than the Mercedes? Uh, yes, it does. Now, it is a completely different car, so in, you could argue it's a bit of a unfair comparison and I haven't driven the EQC or the EQE but I have driven all the petrol and diesel versions of it and this does beat it every single time and they always do say it but BMW really are a driver's car so if you like driving then this is a perfect car for you um, it's smoother than the Merc it handles speed bumps and potholes better and my Mine's not bad. Mine's a dream in comparison to Chardé's 4 Series BM. I mean, that's horrendous on potholes. The Merc's pretty good, whereas this is even better. Um, and even being so much smoother and so much more comfortable, it still handles exceptionally well for a mini SUV, or what I'm going to call a mini SUV, because it's not massive, is it? But it's bigger than an estate. The, the pull and the torque on this is amazing. Have I missed gears? Uh, I haven't, no I haven't. Have I missed the engine noise? Yes I have, um, but that, that's gonna be the compromise. Uh, everything else about it, I really can't say a bad word about it. Again, the one thing I said about the clicky cheek button for the volume on the, uh, on the stereo is a bit annoying. And I think that is literally the only, pop, the only thing I can pick a hole in. Uh, my mate Steve's with me now, and again, he, he loves it. He's been in it for half hour. We've been out for a little drive, and we're just taking it back to BMW Housham um, for the end of the test drive. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope it's helped. Am I going to buy one? I think I am. I think I am. I want the Pro Edition with a head-up display and Harman Kardon 
and I will be changing the wheels and I want the M Sport front and rear bumpers. But that's me, I'm still 21 in my head, <laughs> although I'm not anymore. So I really hope this has helped guys and thanks once again for House and BMW um, for looking after me. Uh, Adam I've been dealing with, they've been really helpful and really kind. Uh, I do really like this car and um, we'll see you soon, maybe. Another thing I'd like to add as well with this car is a, is a couple of things. So we've, we've done a couple of 0-60 tests. We didn't film it because I thought it'd be inappropriate. Um, BMW state, it's just under seven, but it is a few times anything from sort of late fives to mid sixes. So it's pretty quick. But everyone rattles on about the 0-60, but it's not the 0-60 that impresses me with this. It's the sort of 35, 40 to 80 like your overtaking is unbelievable for a mid-sized car which has got I don't know tons worth of battery sitting inside it the the torque to overtake is incredible for what is not a, a monster monster car and the other thing is as well I just want to add everyone that drives electric cars why do they drive so slowly because you're not running the planet and like you've got 400 foot pound of torque and it's like you don't want to use any of it. All the, you know, all the ones I've seen anyway, they seem to sort of pull away really. I'm not saying you have to be an idiot, I'm not saying you have to drive mental, but they all drive at like two mile an hour everywhere, or the ones I've certainly seen, um, when you've got quite a bit of power. Because <laughs> he's nodding back some It's quite impressive and it's quite fun. So I just wanted to add that. So there you go, take it.